Hey guys, you're tuning into the Form First podcast. Tonight we have a special guest in Frank Guastella, and as always we have Joe Militello. And um, well, let's kind of get down to it. You've, you've been doing Sightvis for, is it four? Four years now. I started uh, May 14th, 2014 was my first okay. time. And it was here, It right? was right here, yeah. This was the only one that was available. I, I found out about Sightvis through a cousin of mine, uh, Sus- uh, Chris Jara. She's friends with Suzanne Kroll. Suzanne posted something on Facebook about um, Cyphus, and my cousin shared it, and I took a look at it, mm-hmm. and I said, this is exactly the workout that I want to do and I want to start getting into. But uh, before I tried it, Mike, what I did was uh, I saw that you had a website. I went to the website. I looked at it. Uh, I saw you had some other videos mm-hmm. on there, too, that were on YouTube. So I went to YouTube and I studied the videos. Mm-hmm. And what I did is I went to my gym and I wanted to see if I could even do it. Right. You know, I wanted to see if I could push a plate. You know, mm-hmm. can I do some of the other things that I saw in your videos? They, they didn't have field turf like this. They had carpet like you have out in your, oh, really? your hallway here. And uh, you know, I was trying to push plates on there. And I saw I could, I could do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't see a lot of what the tasks were, but I saw enough to give it a shot so mm-hmm. I did that for about two or three weeks and then I got up the nerve to, yeah. to call because in all your videos I never saw anybody my age so I wasn't sure from an age factor mm-hmm. maybe this was the workout for me mm-hmm. but uh, I came down here it was a Sunday afternoon I think it was a 1:30 class there was only one other person here yeah and Frankie was here okay and uh, one of the funny things was when I first walked in the building I asked this other young man that was in here said, what's the average age of the people that do this? And he says, that's like 25 to 45. <laughs> and I go, oh, I'm, this might be a little tough for me. And so, you're still doing it four years later. I'm still doing it four years there later. There you go. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I started at 62. Mm-hmm. I'm 66 now. And you probably feel younger now. I feel good. That's good. I feel good. That's I awesome. feel great. And, and the other thing I, I remember about my first time in here was... Frankie telling me, uh, look, if you're going to get sick, he goes, Mike does not want you to get sick on the turf. <laughs> so he pointed to that bucket there that was right around the corner yeah. because I was running in that lane. Yeah. And he said, if you're going to get sick, you better get over there. That's so funny because we used to have <laughs> hockey guys that would get sick all the time. And so there used to be bushes out there, and they used to be called the puke bushes because they were they were always like going out the night before and stuff like that. But and one time a guy puked somewhere. I actually think I still have a stain, so that's why I was like, at that time I was like, no, this, this, turf, this turf has to stay like pristine. Yeah, he was very adamant about it. That's funny. You know? And what's really funny, Mike, is that about a year into Cyphus, you posted something um, on the Cyphus website. Uh, it was actually an article that was written in the Gross Point News that I wrote or <laughs> that someone wrote mm-hmm. about you mm-hmm. and how you started Cyphus yeah. and it jogged my memory when it said you started it at Point Athletic I was gonna ask Club. You. Uh, yeah, yeah, Point Fitness. Uh, Point Fitness because yeah. I used to go there and train under Graham Polakoff at the Detroit Medical Center right. Sports Performance Academy mm-hmm. and he used to have me warm up in this little room off where they yeah. were and I remember walking in this room and there was a small little white grease board and there was all these weird names on there like yeah ogre bovine gargoyle and it, and it had something like workout of the day or today's workout i don't remember what the top of it said but i was trying to figure out i wonder what what all of that stuff means and then one time when i got there i couldn't go in there to warm up because i looked in and there was people working out in there and i saw people pushing plates and doing halo what what was a halo right and it kind of jogged my memory and i said well geez i saw this stuff probably a year, two years ago in its infancy. Yeah. It, would have been, it could have been four years. It could have been. I, yeah. I, I think I started with Graham maybe in 2010 or 2011. Yeah, 2010 is when we like first like started throwing some like tasks together and I had like a private, semi-private training with uh, uh, Bart, Tim, and a guy named Andy. And uh, that's kind of really how it originated. But um, it wasn't really structured until 2011, and that's when we had like three classes a week or three three days a week. We offered it and stuff. Yeah. So, but you know, I remember you telling me that like you were. Cause remember they had like they had like double door, double doors, and they were like glass, and yes. you could like look in, and people would just be like sitting there like, like what what are these guys doing and stuff. And back then, I mean, I don't know if you know this or remember it, but we actually used to do treadmill sprints. So we would do like 
like today's, not today's workout is not a good example, but like tomorrow we have three different circuits. We would do like, no, it's not, but we would do, we would do like a half a mile run before each uh, circuit. Oh, okay. You could sprint it if you wanted to. But when I look back, it was kind of a way to just like get in front of like the other people in the gym, be like, hey, we're doing something different and then run back to the other room. Be like, yeah. What are these guys doing? Oh, you had to go to a different spot? Oh, yeah. It was a big gym. There was 14,000 square yeah, feet. Yeah, it was, it was yeah. A, a very big facility. And I remember going back to my gym up in Marysville and telling a couple guys that I worked out with, I said, man, I saw some really strange type <laughs> of <laughs> exercise. I said, these guys were taking, you know, 45-pound plates, and they were mm-hmm. pushing them along the, the floor, and, you know, they were holding them over their heads. And <laughs> you know, when I look back at that, and, like, people would be looking at us, like, almost kind of like a, someone would look at, like, a pet, you know, like a hamster doing whatever it is. It, at that time, it was, it took a lot of courage. And, like, I was pretty, like, nervous because I knew I was doing something that was not really done before. And it was so unorthodox at the time and it was so like out of the norm that I didn't know if it was going to take you know so it was like when people would watch me it would or watch us it was just kind of like the people that were like not meatheads but the people that worked out regularly they would look at us like what what are these guys doing so I sometimes I would kind of question like is this gonna happen or not but you know we kind of stuck with it and did well I loved it and uh, y- you know I I was starting to transition to I'd been a competitive weightlifter really? from 1975 to about 19, I think, 84. Uh, Could you go into that a little bit? Yeah, right? sure. Yeah, I, I started uh, into powerlifting, hmm. and actually in my first meet, I finished third in the state uh, wow. in the juniors. I was about 20, 24, 25 years old. I just graduated from college, and then the weightlifting coach that we had really felt that I could be a good Olympic lifter. Really? And because uh, I was short, you know, short limbs. stocky yeah. up in here, and he felt that that was a good type of build for snatches, clean and jerks. It is, yeah. You know, so he convinced me that, uh, you know, I should go from power lifting to Olympic <laughs> lifting, which I did, and I won a state championship in 19... 19- the junior state championship in 1977. Wow. And then continue to compete in Olympic lifting for probably another couple of years. And, and I just suffered a lot of injuries. That was my next question. Primarily because back in those days, weightlifting coaches did not teach you how to strengthen parts of your body to make them uh, capable of handling the amount <clears throat> of weights that you <clears throat> should. I was told, you want to lift heavy, mm-hmm. you got to train heavy. I was the same way, so, too. So consequently, mm-hmm. we did, and, mm-hmm. you know, I, I remember pulling a pectoral muscle, pulled a shoulder oh, muscle. Mm-hmm. I mean, just uh, the warm-ups were, oh, no. were nothing. Like, yeah. you, you would look at an athlete today, especially the warm-ups. I mean, we didn't stretch. You just mm-hmm. took a light bar and started doing snatches. Yeah. Or you, you, you did some military presses. Mm-hmm. Or you did some clean jerks yeah. with a light bar. And then you just started pounding more weight on there. More mm-hmm. weight, more weight, more weight. And like one rep max is it like... That, that was it. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, I started questioning that. Plus, it was really hard on my body. So I mm-hmm. wanted to go back into powerlifting. So I went back into powerlifting, but by that time, steroids were really a, a, a mm. big part of that kind of competition. And you know, I didn't, I wasn't oh, yeah. interested in doing steroids because I had done enough research on them to realize what they did to your body mm-hmm. and how. Yeah, you might make some significant gains, but what are you going to gain in the long yeah. run? You know, I wanted to be able to walk when I got to this age, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not be crippled or, yeah. or just having my body just for a moment of bad. glory. Yeah, that's you know? it. It wasn't yeah. that important. It's kind of like baseball. I mean, guys kind of had the me- meteoric rise and mm-hmm. have a couple, you know, solid years that broke records, but then. You know, for what? what? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, What's the game? You know? Well, I mean, I mean money. They, they're <laughs> rich right now. Yeah. I mean, it's not justifying it, but <clears throat> no. They baseball's the the one sport you got away with money. It too. You get yeah. one contract. That's what. That's why you see all these fluky one year seasons. Yeah. Guys mm-hmm. take steroids and do what they got to do. 
get paid, and then they're back to being horrible. It doesn't matter. Like they get Ron. paid no matter what. Yeah. What, what, what is this? What is that? Mm -hmm. the, the pin. Uh, those are, it's a demolition. It's axe and smash. They're old wrestling, wrestling tag team. How old? Like How old 80? are they? Like eight, no, like eight from the 80s? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They wrestled in the 90s. Who was that guy I told you? I, this is completely off topic, but I sent you a picture. Like, uh, Hillbilly, Hillbilly Bob or something. Hillbilly yeah, Jim. I was in a, I went to a Red Wings game and, and I was like five years old and we were in a suite and like Gordie Howe was there and it was like all these like, like Dave Coulier was there too. I just remember that. Um, and What's then, he from? Full House. Oh, are you going to quiz me again? Do you, 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 you have questions? <laughs> He's a Notre Dame high grad. Is he really? Yeah, class of 77. I didn't know yeah. that. And that's where you went to? Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, before I forget, uh, one year ago tomorrow, what, what, whoa, wow. So November 13th. November 13th. Thirteenth, yeah. Oh yeah. We shot our first podcast. I kind of thought that's what it was. Yeah. It, see, it didn't seem like we did it in November. We did. Uh, we did it November thirteenth. I actually look back at our texts, and I still have texts like, "Oh, I'll see you there," you know. So. What day of the week was it? I think it was a Wednesday, um, because then I published it. No, I think it was a Tuesday, and then I published it on Wednesday. Yeah. Very. Cool. I can't believe it's been like a year. I mean, yeah. it's, and we've done this is. 31 or 30, so we've done more than half the, yeah. you know, which I, doesn't seem like it, but we have. They're really neat. I mean, it's a great way for other CIFAS members to meet, you know, some of the, the people yeah. at, at the different gyms. You know, I, I really enjoyed, like, your podcast with, with Bill and, and uh, Michelle and, mm -hmm. you know, and then other people that I didn't really know that well. So well, let me ask it was, you. It was really nice. If you... Uh, like a, people that came to your mind from your turf, who would you recommend to like kind of spotlight in, in the podcast? Is there anybody that well, you think has a unique story or you? Yeah, I really do. I think Janelle Lusky has a a very interesting story. I mean, mm -hmm. very inspirational. You know, she had cancer at like I think thirty five years of age. I'm not positive, and she overcame it. And to me, that's that's extremely inspirational. You know, they. A lot of the people at, uh, you know, Harrison tell me that I inspire them, but Absolutely. they inspire me. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, I try to feed off of their energy when I'm in there. And, and I'm, well, you know, the one thing about Cyphus is it's, it's very motivating and you're around very positive, upbeat people. And I like that. I, yeah. I like to come into that kind of environment because that's how I want to live my life. You Absolutely. Know? And, and so when I go in there... Yeah, I'm probably not as adept as most of the people that do it, but um, the people that are there just really inspire me to work hard for the entire hour and be part of the team. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be that weak link. Don't don't be don't be lazy. Don't be you know do what you're supposed to do, and that's what I try to do. Uh, for for one hour, I try to work out as hard as I can. I mean, yeah, sometimes I got to take a lot of, a lot of breaks because it takes a we lot of yeah. energy. You know, I was yeah. I was th yeah. I was thinking today. You know, when I first walked in and I was telling you about the the Viper and the oh yeah and, and those. Well, it takes me 14 jumps per line, so that's 42 jumps Wait. down and 42 jumps back. So one wow. Viper takes me 80. Four movements, wow. which is it's hard, you, you know. Yeah. And I used to really get ticked off with that, you know, because I wanted to be like everybody oh, I, else. I, I remember here. sometimes you'd be, I could tell you were like, not disgruntled, but like, man. Well, yeah. that's you know, it's the competitive nature you that still, you have. And and it. one day Chuck Cook looked at me and he goes, you know what? He goes, don't get mad. He said, you're doing three times what everybody else is doing, mm -hmm. going up and down the floor. He said, most people couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. And he said. That's good. The perseverance, you know? though, that you still keep sticking with it, even when you get frustrated, I think that's what kind of like a lot of us all kind of have that common like thing that makes us tick. Like we're gonna still keep going. Oh yeah. And, and you you know just as well as anyone, there are other things for other people that make them feel the exact same way. Yes. Yes. Y you yeah. know, yeah. we all have it. Yeah. Some things others are just better at than others and then it's switched. Some people are better at something else and get frustrated at something else that you like. Mm -hmm. It's we're all we, we, we all go through the exact same yeah. 
feelings. Yeah, once, good, bad, and otherwise. You know, now I understand. You know, uh, what my job is when I come in here. It's to get a good workout, and mm -hmm. that's it. And have good form, so you don't get hurt. And that's, the, you're that's it. you're also a catalyst, though, too. I mean, in, in the sense that other people do look to you for inspiration. So, uh, if you keep kind of head down and keep trudging along and keep focusing on what you're doing, I think that that uh, increases the energy of those those around you. So that's also your job too. I feel the same way for myself. I also feel that, you know, I want to be a good example when I'm in Cyphus training. I want, mm -hmm. plus I want people to see that if you're willing to sacrifice and take care of yourself, mm -hmm. you can do this stuff for a long time. You know, last year when I, I went to the, I've got a really bad shoulder, it's bone on bone, I'm down to two options, you know, either cortisone or shoulder replacement surgery. And uh, the doctor that I saw looked at me and he said, why are you doing what you do? He said, think about it. He says, those are boot camp type workouts. He goes, how old are people in boot camps? And I go, well, you know, maybe 18 to 21. And he goes, you're 66 years old. He goes, what makes you think you can compete with them? You're not supposed to. Yeah, okay. And, and that, you, you know, and then, then he told me, he says, you'd feel a lot better if you quit doing that, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> he says, I know people that do Cyphus, you know, I've treated those athletes. He said, oh, that's a boot camp type workout. And he says, you might be 65 and think that you're in the 2% of the people your age that can do that type of thing. He says, but I'm telling you, you're not. You've got a lot of arthritis. And, and I walked out of there and I said to myself, I'm not quitting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, I'm going to keep doing it. I'll, I'll, you know, I, I do a lot more modifications now, and, and all the trainers there really mm -hmm. are, are great with me. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when I can't do something, they sure. say, well, I'll do this, or they see if I'm struggling. You, you know, they'll, they'll make a suggestion right then and there. You know, mm -hmm. so it, it, it's great. I can still do it. Uh, I'll do it for as long as I possibly can. You know, I'm, one of my goals, my goals are maybe a little different than others. You know, the numbers I look at isn't my score. It's it's how many workouts can I get in? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm close. I'm, next week, at some point in time, I'll have hit my 900th uh, documented workout, and I'm really wow. keying towards a thousand. You know, I want to want to get that's there. Like you know, hopefully, triple nine. Ho hopefully, <laughs> sometime early next year. You know, is that on the new stats or all of them? That's really? all of them. That's okay. everything combined. I've got uh, 214 workouts on the old. Wow. I've got 606 with. Uh, 25, 71 with a 35, and four, three with a 45. You got it memorized, huh? So yeah, yeah. That's those are my numbers. That's, you know, that's my, cool. my numbers can't be. You know, my I'm not. Uh, you know, I'm not like a lot of the the people you've had on as guests who are in the top 10 every day. When you look, I'm in the bottom 10, but that's okay. It's you know, I come in and I work out, and I'm with great people, and mm -hmm. I'm doing something I really love. So it's it's all it's all good. How many days a week are you doing it then? Is it five? Well, during the winter, I try and go five. I try and go Monday through Thursday and Saturday. During the summer is when I'm a little busier because of my teaching schedule. You know, I, mm -hmm. I try four days, mm -hmm. three days, you know, maybe Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or, you know, it's Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. Yeah. So uh, you just mentioned, like, kind of off, like, briefly that your, your teaching schedule. Can you explain, like, what you do professionally or what you've done professionally? Yes. Yeah. yeah, well, I've done... I've been in the golf industry for close to 50 years. I started as a caddy at Lockmore Club in 1966. Oh. I'm actually from this area here. I grew up about a mile away from here. Hmm. So uh, I started caddying at Lockmore, and then I went through a, you know, I worked in the bag room and kind of worked my way up. And uh, uh, always worked something in golf, even, you know, worked on grounds crews and things like that. My ultimate goal was I wanted to own a golf course. So over time, you know, if you're going to own a facility, you better know everything about mm -hmm. the business, the industry. So that's what I tried to do. I tried to, between graduating in, from college with a degree in marketing to working at golf courses and in all facets, you know, working in kitchens, working in yeah. uh, bag rooms, working on the golf course, on the maintenance. So I, I taught myself everything about how to run a facility. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, in 1995, a friend of mine and I bought a golf course up in the Upper Peninsula. Really? It's called Red Fox Run, and we ran I that. Know that. Yeah. yeah, we ran that till we sold it in 2007. Oh, 
Okay. But while we were up there too, we also got involved in a development company. We were on an old Air Force base hmm. that had closed, and we bought uh, a number of facilities there. You know, we bought the old officers' club. We bought what was the hotel there. We bought. Um, this is in the UP also. Yeah, this is in this is on KI Sawyer up in Gwynn, hmm. which is uh, to give you a, a, a point of reference, it's south of Marquette. It's three hours west of the Mackinac Bridge, if that helps wow, you. And it was up there. It was. Hmm. Did you live up there? Or uh, did, uh, I lived there for per- six months. Okay. Yeah, I'd leave my family and wow. go live up there. And, you know, I'd leave in yeah. March and I'd come home in October. Did that for 13 years. Wow. And it was tough. You know, I had young kids. Yeah. We had parents living with us at various times, too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there was some, mm-hmm. there was some sacrifice. You know, my wife's a saint to, yeah. <laughs> to put up with that, and uh, I'm really lucky in that respect. You know, I can she, relate to that, yeah. She did a great job. So, you know, I, I tell everybody she pretty much raised our kids, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, we also bought a bunch of houses up there and developed <laughs> um, a, a complex. It was really kind of neat. We had rental units, and then we had actual homes that we bought 100, 100 homes and converted them wow. uh, and sold them all. Nice. And, uh, you know, my, my business partner and I decided to get out of the real estate aspect of it just before real estate crashed, which was great. <laughs> so uh, we did okay for ourselves there and then, uh, you know, just concentrated on the golf course till we sold it in 2007. And then when I came back, I just started, I, I did some consulting for work for a company called Franklin Golf out of Clarkston, Michigan, um, and then just went back into teaching full time. Uh, so now that's primarily what I do. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a golf instructor. It's, I mean, quite a like list, litany of things that you've done. It's like like Forrest Gump's background, like all these like things that you've done, either professionally or personally. I mean, it's, I mean, that's a, that's a full life right there. Too. Yeah, I've done quite a bit. I've been really blessed, and uh, you know, it was a lot of hard work. You know, you're an entrepreneur. You, you understand. Yeah. You run a business. Mm-hmm. You've got a lot. You've got employees. You know, you got to make sure that you're making payroll every yeah. week, and you're paying your bills on mm-hmm. time. And, Play, and uh, uh, paying off uh, plumbing issues. Yes, that. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We had a few of those issues one time in the winter up there. Our, our uh, it got so cold that the ground froze where our heating element. You know where they the heat came in. And it, it just blew our heating oh, system out in the middle mm. of winter up there, which again, you know, you're talking about at that point in time, it was probably oh, yeah. in January. So, you know, you're talking 10, 12 below at night. I mean, it was, it was a mess. It was an absolute mess. Jeez. You know, so I, I can sympathize with what you had to go through today. Oh, yeah. To, so to, for the people that were listening or watching, we had a... Uh, well, some kind of plumbing issue that started, I think, on Saturday. We're running the showers, and, like, everything starts bubbling up from, like, the drain in, drains in both, like, the actual shower and the... The, the middle yeah, of the Yeah, the middle of, like, the, whatever that is. Like, the I don't know anything about plumbing or yeah. anything. Um, but I guess it kind of subsided a little bit. Were you were here Sunday. <laughs> Did it not subside? It was not good. And uh, we couldn't get the plumbers in until Monday. And then... Everything started backing up today, this morning, and then they couldn't get here till like one, and then they were here from like one until five thirty, six o'clock, and it's fixed. But it's one of those things like as an entrepreneur, you you got to kind of plan for the unexpected. It, it, exactly, and you got to you got to. To me, you know, I wanted before I owned a golf course, I wanted to make sure I knew every every so facet. Many facets, of it. Yeah. yeah, you know, I was I was a country club general manager. I managed Lockmore yeah. for about three or three, three or four years. I was at St. Clair Golf Club. Uh, I was at Paint Creek and Lake Orion, you yeah. know, as a general manager. Just played there. Yeah. Well, not just played there, but uh, had an outing uh, in, I think, August. So you guys can relate. I mean, you play pretty frequently, right? No. Nah, I mean, I, once a week? Yeah. A week. A couple uh, I don't a week. play a lot. I just, I'm in the business. I, I haven't played a lot of golf in years I mean I'm lucky if I play once or twice a month now I mean, really? that's not my priority my priority is trying to take your level up or my priority right now is you know I work with some really 
really good high school and college mm -hmm. players, and you know, I'm trying to get them to the next level if that's where they want to go. That's interesting for you to say that because I can relate to that. It's like I kind of had my like career with Cyphers, and it's like it's not. I don't. I'm. It's to show other people how to do it. Yeah. You know, and see them flourish. You know. I, I, I play very little. I don't practice anymore. Yeah. And huh. it's like anything else. If you're not doing it a lot, you know, when, when you go out there, it's a struggle. My mind still still <laughs> sees and Me visualizes <laughs> the shots, but I can't always pull them off that's, like that's I used to. That's interesting because I would, I would think, I mean, obviously, like basketball coaches or hockey coaches aren't playing either. Mm -hmm. um, but for golf, I just, I would think that um, playing, it would be hard to, to coach without playing, but... Obviously, that's not the case, huh? Well, first of all, Joe, where I'm at, I'm just, I am the teaching professional. I am not the head professional. You know, it's the head professional's responsibility to go out and play with the members and, you know, do the thing and, and run the tournaments and stuff like that. My job is strictly to, to teach there, and that's it. And that's all, at this point in my life, that's all I want to do, to be honest with you. Would I like to play more golf? Yeah, I probably would, but I'm really having a great time. Um, teaching others and, and I still have a passion for it and I still want to learn about it you know I still network with my fellow professionals and I, I still want to learn everything I possibly can so that if you came to me for a lesson I'm not teaching you stuff that was going on 20 years ago sure. I can relate to the modern swing you yeah. know I, I can relate to the fact that it's a now a stable lower body with a lot of upper body rotation um, you know where probably when I first started playing golf because of the equipment you know, if you wanted to get a lot of distance and things like that, there was a lot of leg action. You know, there was the reverse C finish to, to help you launch it a little bit higher. I mean, hmm. there was a lot of different things that the players today don't have to do. First right. of all, the equipment's Te 10 times better. Right? Technology's awesome. Plus, from a teaching perspective today, it, it, there's so much available to you from a technology standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't teach today without video. Mm -hmm. Number one, I mean, video, 3D is the optimum, but you know I can't afford that, and and I'm because I'm in an area that it's just not that upwardly mobile, so you know I'm using 2D, but it's still good. I mean, I still get a lot of, <clears throat> I I can show a player a lot of things off of a 2D uh, film of them, and and just the other things that are available today. Fitness is such a huge part of golf. When I first started teaching golf, there was three ways you could make a player better. Lessons, equipment, and teaching them how to manage themselves better on a golf course. When Tiger Woods got into golf, he brought a fourth aspect, fitness. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys remember when he first came out there. and You, you saw a change in his body. And you, you saw mm -hmm. other players should. started seeing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they started seeing how far this guy could hit it mm -hmm. and how good he could hit it. And... The next thing you know, all golfers right now on the tours are using, f you know, fitness as part of their training. Guys, Brooks Koepka is huge. He is. He's so, huge. Dustin Johnson. I'll tell you what. Look, you look at a guy like Justin Thomas, who's, you know, probably a buck forty-five soaking wet, and the guy just pounds the ball. But he's got. He's very, very fit. He's very, very athletic, and and he's just got tremendous upper body rotation. What, I mean, what, you know what they do for like what, what their typical routine is? Yeah, like yeah, because because I'm a TPI certified professional, and and part of it is you know understanding how the body works, and there's a there's a screening process that you put a student through so you can see if they have any imbalances, you know where their weaknesses are. Because as an instructor, you may tell them to do something. And the only reason they can't do it is because they're physically there's some kind of physical yeah. imbalance that precludes them from doing it. So if you can put them on some kind of a fitness program to help them and strengthen those weak areas, you can get them to do what you're asking to do. So have I seen some of the workouts? Yes, I have, Mike. And that they do. They work a lot on balance, mm -hmm. core strength, flexibility, mobility, stability. And then there is some aspects of strength training, but again, they're not using um, well, I shouldn't say this. Some players are using some pretty heavy weights, yeah. like the well, deadlift and bench press yeah. and stuff like, like that. But primarily, you, they're not using a lot of heavy weight. Right. You, know? was, you can tell. Some, like, he's oh, huge. You said someone's huge. Yeah. He's like, like, he's like Tiger. Tiger's, you know, I, I 
at the Buick Open a couple of years, you know, in the, the last few years the Buick Open, I went and just watched him one time on the practice range. I, I didn't even bother to go out on the golf course. I just wanted to watch what this guy could do, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. But, yeah, when you look at his body, he looked like a, a, yeah, a safety or something like that. He was, no, yeah. he had the, the V shape, and he had big arms, and he had, you know, the sleeves I just don't know. <laughs> I just don't know how that translates to golf other than hitting it further. Like, is like baseball and football, I could I could see like the the power, and I could see that with golf. But like we're talking about getting bigger, and and well, like, like well, not, he, it, not a lot of guys are looking huge. Bulky, yeah. L like he was talking about um, mm -hmm. Justin Thomas, Dustin Johnson's tall. I don't think yeah. he's that big. He's no. super length yeah. lanky. Yeah, great athlete and too. Absolutely pounds the ball. Mm -hmm. It's it's incredible, mm -hmm. and then there's a, there's all the young guys that in that range now, yeah. they're they absolutely crush the ball, huh. and what happens just like with Tiger. The tournaments start adjusting the course mm. to not benefit that length, and you saw that in uh, in the Ryder Cup that was in France, right? Yeah, it totally negated. Yeah, all totally our negated. Really? Yep. The, the American strength, yep. which was length. Mm -hmm. You know, and they had no the, 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 uh, the European there, players are very, very <laughs> creative. They got <laughs> yeah. short games. That, you know, the golf courses they're playing are uh, they're they're set up to do a lot of bump and runs and different things that the players here don't do. You know, today it's kind of bomb and gouge. Yeah. You know, you, you just how far can you hit it? You know, when I learned to play, there was a premium placed on hitting the ball straight. Distance wasn't a big factor. It was a factor, but I'm not gonna say it was the key factor. The best factor was how straight can I hit it, how good can I putt, you know, how good, how's my short game? Mm -hmm. You know, those are all things that I, I would tell you that golf course was set up for. Players that had great short games, exactly, yeah. and, and well, you saw what happened over there. I mean, they just, they just destroyed the U.S. They had no chance. Mm -hmm. it, it was. It was tough to watch. Did you watch any of that? <laughs> Me? No. I'm, I'm still stuck on the fitness aspect of it. Because, like, when you guys say they're good athletes, I want to know, like, okay, what do they do for cardio? Like, how, how are they performers, like, in endurance or, like, their stamina? Like They, like, they do so. You, you have to have, first of all, you have to have stamina to walk 18 holes, sometimes in 100 degree or more heat. In pants, four days. Yeah. I mean, four days you know, in a row. We have, we have a you know. code of ethics on how we have to dress when we play in golf tournaments. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you got to wear long pants. You, you, you know, something I didn't like about baseball. Either. You know, that's just the way it is. And and you got to play. And obviously, you know, when you're playing in the summers, mm -hmm. you're in some areas of the country that it's hot. Mm -hmm. So you have to have stamina to be able to walk sure. 18 holes and handle that. So do you? Do, would you know like what they do? Like, I mean, I've read. Well, like I've, I've seen, you know, different. <clears throat> I've seen Rory work out a little bit, and he he does a lot of balance work. You know, you'll see him working with uh, fit balls, mm -hmm. and they got him strapped in, and he's he's doing different rotational movements off of it. Uh, he does a lot of deadlifting. You know, I don't, I don't. He's another person that kind of transformed his body. He did. Uh, got a little little stronger, a little mm -hmm. bigger. Looks real good. Um, but I think the, it's that, the shirts that's make the them look good too. They wear those tight shirts, <laughs> make their arms and but, veins. But um, that, that's primary. You, you know, they're like I said, they're doing a lot of things for balance, core strength, mm -hmm. um, stability. It sounds like I mean I could be wrong, but it sounds like it's more about uh, like you said stabilizing, but kind of like perfecting like the the, not the musculature, but the way that the body moves exactly as a, as a as, a, as opposed to like. Exactly. Like the cardio output and the, the, the ex not explosiveness, like the, the athletic. No, there, there is explosive. There is explosive. I know that's yeah, not you, the you word have to, I'm looking for. Your, I think your legs have to be strong to mm -hmm. play golf because you have to let the best players leverage the ground so well. This generation I, changed the way mm -hmm. you would look at what a golfer is right. versus like the stereotypical. John Daly. Yeah, I mean that's not it. Yeah, no, but it's a, that's yeah. a good example. Yeah. The the guy w was successful, mm -hmm. and he's the furthest thing from an athlete right. you think of. I'm you gonna, know? Yeah, and Joe, that's a really good point. I caddied on the PGA Tour back in 1975, and <clears throat> there was nobody doing fitness out there, with the exception of Gary Player. 
and, and you were told that if you lift weights, that's the worst thing you could do to play golf because it was going to make you a muscle bomb. Yeah. You know, you're going to get too big. But player, yeah, he lifted weights, but he also did a lot of things to maintain flexibility and mobility. Mm-hmm. And, and the guy's 80-some years old now, and you look at him, and he looks like he's yeah. probably in his 60s. It, it's right. like, you know, He's in great physical shape. I mean, he's a guy that I've always looked up to as, as somebody, yeah, that's who I'd like to emulate. You know, I, I saw where fitness at that time was playing a part in how his golf game was. You know, he was in great shape. Mm-hmm. And, um, but typically back in those days, yeah, the lifestyle was different. You know, the players yeah. smoked, yeah. drank. I mean, if, if you if you watched golf tournaments back in 1975 and you saw Arnold Palmer out there, he was puffing on a Winston or something, you know. And ben Hogan smoked, and, you know, most of your, your players back then, their training habits are nothing like the training mm-hmm. habits are today. Hmm. Nothing. You know, there's a fitness tent that goes – that follows the men's tour and the women's tour so that these athletes can go into a fitness, you know, trailer early in the morning, get their workouts in, get their stretching in and stuff before they even hit the golf course. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mike, you know, the other thing you were asking about was, well, what kind of stamina do they need? The typical tour day without, you know, a non-tournament day like a Tuesday or Wednesday, Typically what a tour player does is they get to the golf course early in the morning. I'm going to say usually around 8 o'clock. Okay. And the first thing they do is they probably go putt for an hour, and then they go chip for an hour, and then they get on the range for probably an hour and just start you know, working on technique. And then they go out and play 18 holes. Mm-hmm. And then they come back in, grab something to eat, and, and do that whole process again. So the entire day, non-tournament day, is spent practicing. A, 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 a tournament day, let's say Thursday, the first day of a normal tour event, depending on your tee time, you're probably going to get there two to three hours before your tee time just to go through your warm-up process. You, you're going to stretch. You're, you're going to do some things to loosen your body. Then you're going to start that whole routine again. You're going to putt for a while. You're going to chip for a while. You're going to go on the range and, and hit, you know, hit balls for probably an hour. And, and then you tee off. And then they play 18 holes, and then they come in, grab some to eat, and they're back out on the range till it's till it's dark. I mean, it's a long day. And when you start adding the fact that they, they played and walked 18 holes, right. plus all these balls are hitting, mm-hmm. you know, who, I can't tell you how many shots they might have. Yeah, hit they'd be in, so in sore the, after one day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've done I've done multiple days in a row playing, you know. Two rounds, so 36 holes in one day, mm-hmm. driving, not even right. walking. Yeah. Yeah. And I am beat. Mm-hmm. So to add the aspect of having to walk, let's say yeah. what, eight eight thousand yards, like conservatively. For for those guys, yeah. yeah you know, probably seven, that's a long, yeah, yeah, it's, probably it's, conservative because you've, you've got, got distances between, between holes. holes and, so I mean it's just it's 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 a lot of wear on your and, body. And the swing today too is it's if you look at some of those swings, that's pretty violent motion, you know, with a stable lower body and huge that's, upper body rotation. Can yeah. you imagine what that's doing to your back? That's, you know, you know what hurt Tiger was the, the way he stopped, okay, the way he transferred his weight. He would brace all that motion into the left leg, and that's, that's when, remember at the U.S. Open, I think, uh, maybe 10 years ago when he played against Rocco, mm-hmm. And and he collapsed. Mm-hmm. I mean, his knee just was it buckled. ACL only, or what was it? I, yeah, I think it yeah. was an ACL. Mm-hmm. But, but I mean, sense. Mike, all that all that torque coming in, and then the bracing on the left side. You know that, you that was like your see stopping like, mechanism. You know, you, know, you can see like clubs bow yeah. sometimes. Or, you see yeah. his legs. I mean, I mean, it was it like it would like bow it and, out. It's, and it's that's gross. why he's had to change his swing. That's why his swing has uh, become a little less violent. Hmm. But he still has great club head speed because he can still rotate really well. Well, you mentioned something about um, how the swing has changed, and and you asked me uh, like on Facebook about like rotational, like like yeah. what what what. It's kind of like the mentality behind some of the rotational tasks that we have, like Cyclone or Top Shelf or... Meals Wheels is a great one for learning how to leverage the ground. Oh, there, yeah, there's, there's a lot of weight transferring and stuff. Um, Tyson's another one, you know, Taras, Trog, all those. Uh, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> um, 
Well, what I was, what I asked you was, <clears throat> I understand. To me, Sifa started where you were working with athletes. Yes, you know, for sure. you, you were working with hockey players to okay? mimic their movements, which is a rotational sport, and you were trying to get them to move better. Mm -hmm. I see Sifa's is great for any kind of athlete, mm -hmm. but it, it's extremely good for rotational athletes just because of some of the movements that you use mm -hmm. help strengthen those parts of the body to make your motion better. You know, I'll use cyclones once in a while yeah. when I'm training mm -hmm. a student or, you know, I'll talk to them about meals, wheels, not so much mm -hmm. how to, how to, how to do it, but the concept of it and yes. how you're leveraging the ground and you're pushing off, you know, if you're a right-handed player, you're pushing off the inside of your, your right leg and moving to your left side. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, that's what it takes to take that plate up and down, you know, the turf. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's fascinating. Huh. Like, I'm, I'm thinking more of like, because I play baseball and hockey, the movements, many of the movements that we do here mimic those rather than golf because you were talking about how the swing has changed like cyclone is a baseball swing you pivot on the back on the back to drive your hips through i mean i don't but how I, do you how do you finish so, when, when you hit so, a golf ball well so what i when you finish i finish up I on a, you know if you're a right-handed player I mean, you, I, you I come up like on a, your right toe i hit it like baseball though i'm, I'm more like like, that's okay. The, the only difference, foot back, well, yeah, know, that should be stable. You, know, <laughs> you should try to stabilize that, but but I turn that foot too. Let me tell you something. What you just did there is a golf swing. Okay. Okay. Only the plane is a little bit different. The plane of a, a hitting a baseball is up here. The plane of hitting a golf is more U-shaped. So but I, I, what I do, you know, I take, you know, when people tell me they play baseball yeah. and they're and they've been told I got a baseball swing, I go, that's great. First of all, you understand how to rotate. You understand how to shift your weight from your right side to your left side. I said, and I pick up a baseball bat. I usually take one out with me when I go teach. Yeah. And I start, I start with a baseball swing and then work it into a golf swing. I go, it's perfect. Here, here's you know, where it this differs is it is. In, my, in my opinion because like baseball, like it's driving the hips as hard as you can through. And you don't do that in golf, do you? Yeah, you do. Well, you I rotate it was like, your hips. You, you, your you hips do? start your downward movement. Huh. The hips start the downswing. See, I don't, I, I'm not the, swi the, the shoulders don't start the downswing. The hips start the downswing. So, you know, if I can so you get up here. you don't see the between hockey and golf? You see it more with baseball? So No, I see it opposite with baseball. Like, I, I don't see as much of a correlation between baseball gotcha. and golf. So if I'm going to hit a golf ball, here I am in my backswing. Mm -hmm. What starts my downswing is this move here, see, where I move my hip. And then turn into it. Now look at my feet. Look at look at what my foot's doing. It's the same thing you were doing hitting a baseball. But the the way your weight. Let's see, we're, we're getting really technical here. The way your weight is here, I'd be throwing you curveballs all day long, and you wouldn't hit it. <laughs> so you need to have you need, you need to have your weight back when you hit. Okay. So when I rotate back to hit a golf ball, I load into the, my right side, and then I move into my left side. If I'm playing baseball. I just start here. I start loaded into my right side, yeah. and then I stride in and hit it. There's no, there's no curveball. <laughs> but, but there is a like. Watch this knee. I don't even know why we're talking. Right here. But when you turn, like that's how it is with baseball. It's not like that in golf, is it? This, this knee. Well, yeah. When I when I finish my golf swing, it looks like, my, it's like that. when I finish my golf swing, look at look at my right knee. Okay. But the weight where I'm forward. forward. Yeah, the weight's on the outside of my left foot now. I just, like, I find it interesting that they're both rotational sports, um, but the swings can be so different. Hockey is, hockey's really different. You're, you're oh. shooting off the back leg usually, okay. and it's... Yeah, but there's a load from the right side to the left side if you're a right-handed shooter, right? Yeah, for sure, yeah. yeah. You need to be able to do both. I'm a left handed yeah. shooter. Are you? Yeah. Majority of the... Yes. Left-handed like this? Oh, that's right-handed. Left-handed like this. Actually, the few hockey players, professional hockey players I've worked mm. with are, were really good golfers. I mean, oh. first of all, they had great hand-eye to coordination, yeah. and man, could they rotate. That, well, that's why I was asking you, because the, the, um, some of my friends that played hockey are mm. really good golfers. They are. Yeah. Because well, yeah. they have their summers off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, it's... It's just, I don't know. It's interesting just how 
the different sports that are rotational. Like hockey is represented, or Sifus represents a lot of the hockey movements because mm-hmm. I would say the first hundred exercises that I really came up with was trying to trying to mimic what it is. Is that, that where skates came from? No, tippy tap though. What about enforcer? Enforcer was like more recent. Was that a hockey thing though? Yes, because Bob Probert. Um, he was an enforcer, like people like uh, Bob Prober. Uh, you worked with like Bobby, Bobby Clark, didn't you? Me, yes, you? yeah, yeah. I, uh, the last two years of his career, and um, actually, that, I mean, that's really how this got its start. Was uh, I think he played 19 years in his 18th and 19th year. He was coming back from a um, high hamstring tear, mm. and he was doing a lot of stuff uh, at the DMC. And so we did a lot of body weight training because we didn't want to overload him with like the stuff that he, the stuff that he was doing on his own was not really effective, and it was just like shortening his muscles. So he hired me to do like a lot of agility and lengthening, and, and it was just stuff on the turf. And um, so I would have him do like walking lunges and skate hops and stuff with like agility ladders. A lot of like what it is mm. we do here, and and then that's when like the other. Th- three guys like Bart, Andy, and Tim were like, well, whatever you're doing with him, we want to do that. So we do box jumps and stuff, but that's where like Sightness came from is because we were just doing stuff like skate hops and, and croaking and all that kind of stuff. And I would do it with him to try to motivate him to push himself. So, I mean, the crawling too is such a, such a great aspect. I mean, for I never my, had to crawl <laughs> for myself, you know, I'm not a good crawler, but the one thing I, I wanted to do was if I fall, I want to be able to get up. And yeah, I, I like think that. the crawls, like the crawls help that. You know, mm-hmm. you understand what happens when you're down on all fours, and you gotta leverage yourself to, to get up and down. To me, a lot of it's meant, meant the, that's yeah. mental. It's like a, you know, to, to rise again, to push yourself, like to, to have humility or be humbled by the situation, yeah, like exactly. you said, on all fours, and then. What, what you tell yourself in that moment. And you know, that's the other thing about Cyphus is just the mental aspect of it. And, and you have to think. You have to, you have to read a board. You have, to, <laughs> you have to understand what all those little things are here. And then sometimes, yeah. you know, based on, uh, you know, the type of circuit it is, you, you have to understand what a Centaur 2 is and what, what's a mountain. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, so you're, you're, not only are you working yourself physically, but you're working yourself mentally as well. It's and not fun. many... Uh, to me, or you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if there's many fitness disciplines that require you to think that much. You know, I'd like to think there's not many. <laughs> I mean, it's, um, it's pretty neat what goes on during I mean, the course of a workout. A language. A lot of confusion possible that is not normal. You know, but it's that's it's like. The better you, the more you figure it out, the more experienced you are in whatever. Like, if you're a good chess player and you know like all the moves and the opening moves, it's kind of like you have that at, that advantage in seconds. Right. You know. Okay, I know what a centaur is. The reverse mountain three. Okay, we're going to twelve. But the person just starting off, they wouldn't know that. Oh shoot, I got to do tweaker. Okay. Look well, out for that. a lot of what for me this morning was calculating how many tasks I had left and matching it up with the time. That's what I was. Go- that's what I was. You guys going were both like. The- he said something about. Uh, I had a goal of like how many tasks I want to get to. I never look at like how many. No, I, yeah, I look at it every day. Yeah. I try to see where I. I know I can do about forty tasks, if the degree of difficulty of the task isn't bad. Yeah. Like today, I told you when I came in, I only did thirty-three and a half tasks today. The my goal was thirty-five because once I looked at forty, I, I and I saw what was going to lead me to forty. I knew it was going to take me a long time. Today had, it was more front yeah, it was and stuff. It was yeah. tough. It was a different workout for that. But we've talked about that before, too, where I stopped trying to get a halfway point or, you know, task-wise yeah. or number-wise. Because it, it's like today. It's totally different and not a, a regular um, – it, it wasn't a regular workout where your no. halfway point's going to be your normal 30-minute mm-hmm. um, task number. Mm-hmm. Um, and what that could lead to is mental frustration if you have a point you want to get to and you're not there. So I just stopped looking, and some days it's helped, other days it's yeah. not helped. But um, it eliminates the middle of the 
our frustration mm -hmm. that you didn't hit a goal that you were planning on, you know? The, the closest thing I look to is usually, like, roughly, okay, where do I want to be at, like, the halfway point? Mm -hmm. And if, if it's, it's I usually just kind of split my score in half. Right. I mean, that's, like, the closest thing I will look at and be like, okay, I want to be about here. And but, then, then, but then there's days, like, uh, I guess it would be a super low slope, you know, in, yeah. in the workouts completely backloaded. Mm -hmm. So you're at like, you know, let's call it 40 tasks, but it's yeah. like a 350. And you're pushing. And then there's like 700 yeah. points yeah. behind that, you know, so it's hard to dictate where you're going to be in 30 minutes. But you also go at 5.30 in the morning. I have the luxury of looking at, okay, Big how time. are people, how are people right, like right. today? I was like, wow, people are scoring so high. I was like, well, I can go slower than I was planning on going. If I, if I would have, yeah, for today was a, a perfect example for that. If I would have watched two classes today, yeah, I would have had a way different Mm -hmm. approach like I went into this not feeling great first thing you know I was, yeah. I've been up for 20 minutes and I'm <laughs> working out um, <laughs> it uh, it would be a whole different ball game if I if I got to see two hours of it mm -hmm. and, uh, and know where to push and where to catch my breath and not need to go as hard and then go hard again mm -hmm. um, and I think it would have been extra, extra, seeing all those high scores and the people yeah. finishing like it would have yeah, people were finishing changed. without yeah, expecting it. They're like, oh, I'm done. I, I, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't plan on it at all. I mean, I, I didn't think. Dina was the same way. I didn't I'm like, think you're going to finish. She's like, no. I'm like, she had like seven minutes. Like, and I'm like, there's no way you could not finish. You've got like five tasks left. Yeah. And, um, but, but the funny thing about that, when I was, let's say, half done, mm -hmm. I said, there's no way. Like, actually, no, it wasn't halfway. It was, it was when I was going to do the mountain for the third time. I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna have to do this again. So the last, the, oh. the, the third devil I'm doing, I'm like, all right, this is the last devil for the day, you know. And then, there was, <laughs> the, the, like, anytime I, anytime I hear people like, I, I gotta stop, like, I'm like, do you hear what you said? It's the last devil of the day. Like, nowhere else can you say can that. You, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's that? Yeah. yeah. But, well, but yeah. then I got to a point where I think it was, I think I had uh, eight tasks with five minutes left, and. That's when I I thought I was going to be able to finish, and I I did the mountain a lot. It was probably the fastest one out of the four. Was the last one I did. Well, the the first two circuits in this workout were the slow ones. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, for sure. The other, the other two flew, and you didn't realize that until you got. To so it. I wasn't paying attention. Or if you got to. I was planning on going over. No, no, no. no. Oh. I knew we were going down, okay. but. It was two reverse bulldogs, and then I knew Rampage was next. So when I got back from reverse bulldog, I went right into Rampage, and I was planning on oh. drinking water for the second one. Okay. And I didn't realize Potty the Bulldog was, was the first. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> so yeah. totally ruined my plan. Because I knew that was going to be the only time to get water in that area. Unless you, know? you had meals wheels. I mean, you, I you, carry you don't, you don't yeah. carry it. Yeah. I, I carry it. Um, I'm always amazed at people that can finish a work. Okay finish a workout like tonight you know at Harrison when I ran Rhonda Kershaw finished and Mike Vogel finished hmm. I mean it, it's just amazing to, to watch the speed and, yeah. and the way they uh, the way they move I mean, I mean that's another thing about Cyphus that I like watching is I get a chance to work out with some really elite athletes I think that's just it like I mean it is like, cool it is really cool there are some like really like oh. like Bill, like he's yeah. a phenomenal Bill athlete. Phenomenal. You know what I mean? Michelle, like I mean, I could list a dozen more than that. Yeah. And they they are like professionals in this sport. You know they're, what I mean? They're very elite at it. Yeah. I you know Mike, one of the the best things um, was March Mayhem. That was so much fun watching you and Kathy oh, go thanks. against yeah. Ray and, and uh, Jane. <clears throat> yeah, and, and it was were, great yeah. for me because I, I've worked out with Jane before, and she's she's really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, very, very athletic, mm -hmm. you know, good. You, you can see her functional movement yeah. patterns are really good. I'd never really worked out with Ray. I didn't really know him that well. I knew who he was, mm -hmm. but uh, he was an incredible athlete yeah. for a guy that big. I mean, his movement was off the charts as yeah. far as I was he's strong. concerned. Very, very strong. And I asked yeah. him, you know, when he got done, I said, you know, I looked at him and I figured he was a football player. I said, mm -hmm. did you play football in college? He, he goes, no, I actually, he says, I, I danced in high school. He was a dancer. Yeah. And, and now it makes, makes, sense. makes a lot of sense yeah. just by the way you can see his moves and you yeah. can see his, his level of flexibility wow, is incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched him warm up one day 
at Harrison. I was mm -hmm. just amazed at what he could do uh, f just from a warm up perspective. I think cardio is like number one, but flexibility is right yeah. there behind oh, yeah. it. You know? I mean, he was extremely flexible. Mm -hmm. Extremely flexible. Hmm. And that, that, that's, to me, some of the fun of, of Cyphus. You yeah. know? Plus, I'm a visual learner. Mm -hmm. I try to watch certain people like at, at Harrison, especially like Becky. Becky Bashan has mm -hmm. just awesome form. Yeah, you know, I tell people at our place, you want to learn how to do Cyphus, watch that lady. Yeah. I said, because she is incredible. Mm -hmm. Her form is impeccable. She's, you know, she's mm -hmm. really competitive. She's too. disciplined. Yeah, very, very disciplined. Uh, she's, she's just a, a great competitor, you know. And mm -hmm. I like watching people compete. I don't care if it's doing Cyphus, playing mm -hmm. baseball, playing golf. I think... You know, the opportunity to, to see someone compete at a high level is yeah. is neat. It really is. And that's one of the, the nice things about Cyphus is there, there's some incredible athletes doing this. Well, I mean, Tim, like I was going over the, the Crawl for the Cure or whatever, whatever yeah, you said. I was yeah. just going over some of those videos because I'm using them for some demonstration uh, videos that I'm releasing soon. And I was looking at Tim's foreman, like his, like Petra, Scorpion, oh, okay. like... He, he is on point, and I, I was going to text him today to, to tell him point. that. But like, I like not that I've ever like underestimated, but I was like, wow. It, I the, I think I brought this up before, but it was like it, intentional came yes. to mind. Yes, and that's it. that's what it's got to be. Yeah. It's like every it's like thoughtful movement. with yes. every. Yes, yeah. I love that. Yeah. and and you can see it. Yes. It's it's crazy that mm -hmm. it, it's, it's like he just translates that. Mm -hmm. he, he's fun to work out with too. I mean, he's very yes. motivating. I mean, you know, he's yeah. He's encouraging you, you know, if you're running next to him, and he's he's telling him, "Come on, let's let's keep moving, keep you know," and, and it's fun. I, I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy working out with with him. I'm just laughing because the people that have like worked out with him at Royal Oak that are members here have like said to me like, "Oh, well, like the contrast between the two of us. I'm not rah rah. I'm I'm usually like if I if I say something, I'm usually like, pointing something out to kind of correct, and they're like, well." It, it's a little different. He, he was really kind of like upbeat and, and, and I'm like, well, I'm sorry if I'm not motivating you guys enough, but um, they're like, no, no, it's all right. And I'm like, and this was like Dina and Roy and I don't know if it was Antoinette or whoever. And I was like, like, it like bothered me for like the entire hour that they were working out. And so I'm like, guys, I'm sorry if I'm like letting you down as like a, like a coach, but it's just like, <laughs> I don't, I'm, just totally, I'm, like, I'm just not like yeah, everybody's different though Mike I mean yeah. you, you know when I worked out here and, mm -hmm. and you were the, the trainer I, yeah. I always I always enjoyed it I liked your style I liked the way you will point out something if you think it's going to benefit the the person to do the task better or yeah. you know correct them so they don't get hurt I, I think everybody's style is different you know I look at at Harrison and um, you, you from a competitive aspect, you, you have the, the quiet competitors, you know, like, like a Becky, like a Michelle Brown, mm -hmm. and they get out there and they're, they're locked in. Mm -hmm. They're locked in. They're not going to say anything. They're just going to lead by example. And then, you know, we got some people who are really good, but they're a little more vocal. A Sue yes. Johnson, you know, Amy, Amy Davey. I mean, should, Amy will call you out, you know, if, <laughs> if you're not doing something <laughs> correct. And, you know, I don't want that wrath. You know, <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, to do the best form I mm -hmm. can and, and do the best I can. But they're different type of leaders, and mm -hmm. they're they're part of the makeup of the community of, of the facility that we're at. And they're, to me, they're an integral part of what goes into showing up every day. Well, that's know? well said. It's like a, like playing for any coach. Like I mean, yeah. if you played a you know, team sport or whatever, it's like certain coaches motivate certain players a certain way. And it and it's uh, it's I guess it's good to have all those different kind of characters and see you know that's why I would love to like have like Cyphus teams and just like boom I pick these six people and they've all got to be like 500, 600, 700, 800, and I'm gonna coach them through this workout. But I remember when when we when I first joined Harrison we did something like that you know that we had four man teams it was fun yeah. I mean I got lucky I got paired with Michelle Matthews. Um, Jen D. Mercurio and Chuck Cook. I mean, oh it was gosh. a no-brainer for <laughs> yeah. me. I mean, it was just show up. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh... It was so much fun working out with them, too. I mean, that was the origination know. essentially of Turf Wars. Yeah. I mean, I started, I just called them turf competitions, and, and actually, I'm way back at Point Fitness. And I would just take like everyone's, like four people's boulders and just kind of 
morph them together and just try to come up with the, the closest yeah. teams. I remember awesome. seeing, we did one here probably, probably four years ago. I remember when I was fairly new, yeah. and uh, I just completely ruined the team I was on. <laughs> it, was, it, was like, it was like awesome, 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 and then it was like me down here and just completely ruined the numbers of the math. But That's funny. It was just funny seeing that. Yeah. Sorry, guys. No, no. no it's, it's, it, um, it, it's, again, one of, one of the neat things about Cyphus is that you can do stuff like that. And, and the fact that we can, <clears throat> the different levels can work out together. It's kind of like a golf handicap, mm -hmm. you know, if yes. I can re relate it to that. Yeah, I relate it to golf pretty frequently, yeah, I mean, even though I don't play. You, you yeah. use the word slope, yeah. which, you know, we use in golf yeah. as far as degree of difficulty. And is, is, that, is that what it is? Degree yeah. Degree of difficulty? I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> I did not know that. No, the higher the number, the harder the course. Really? Mm -hmm. See, I didn't know that. And that's just kind of like a yeah. happens. There's a course thing. rating and then there's a slope. I knew there was a slope, but I didn't really know what yeah. it meant. Huh. I just meant the degree at which you're climbing. Uh, how, how does that relate to golf? Like, why do they call it a slope? Well, that's the degree of difficulty of the golf course. You know, it could be the different things that factor in to making a hole easy or hard. You okay. know, length Placement. is one. Topography is another. Mm -hmm. Is it tree lined? You know, is it well bunkered? I mean, there's some mm -hmm. things that that a course rater will use when they determine the slope of each hole, and then they add all those numbers up to mm -hmm. to get a, a a number that basically tells you how difficult or or how easy the golf course it's is. Similar to what you guys see it. Yes, it's super complicated and yes, people, and like it's people similar. don't know what it means. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I, I can't it's tell exactly you exactly what it means. But. It's degree uh, difficulty in number. Golf, so um, I can relate it. <laughs> so we're uh, kind of getting close to like the hour cutoff, sure. which is like kind of where I try to keep it. I want to give you uh, kind of get in your head a little bit about sure. um, like your favorites, likes, dislikes. Uh, so, what is your favorite exercise to do? Bench because I can Benched? lay down. <laughs> lay down. <laughs> that's, that's why I don't I like have to crawl. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm not a very good crawler. It's pretty difficult for me to crawl. You say I, I, I gotta like argue with that a little bit because like you say you're not a good crawler, but you do it. No, you, and like I do it. But I don't do it. Maybe to the but, degree. But you, you're comparing. You, you can't. You, you just you just no, do I it. Understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I there's things I don't do very well, but I do it. You know, I don't. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> do you have a, a favorite circuit? Yeah, I like the Centaur Two. The Centaur Two. Yeah. So you like March Mayhem? Yeah. Those workouts are tough. Yeah. Oh, I, they're, but I liked yeah. them. I, 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 did we just know. we just did we just did that on, on Election Day? Actually, right? Election Day was the second round of March Mayhem this past year. Yeah. People like that. People do like that. Oh, people. Well, we had we had like three different pick your poisons last week. It was. Election Day, was it a PYP uh, Mad Hatter? Uh, <laughs> yes. And then there was that one that was uh, at, at the end of Turf Wars. It was like top row, bottom row, left or right. And that was really confusing to teach people. Yeah, we, we, yeah. Did, that, yeah. we, we did that Thursday and Monday. Yeah. Yeah. And that was, it, it, Monday it was harder for some reason than Thursday because practice was more people on Monday. I did, so I didn't do it Thursday. And then when I was here Monday, I, I thought I explained it. Quite well. No one, um, yeah. I was just blank stares. But luckily, I think three of the people had already done it. Yeah. So what they did was they did the opposite yes. of what they did before. So I think they, I think they started at the top uh, on Thursday. So they started at the bottom uh, that day. I hadn't done it, so I just I wasn't trying to think. Right. Like I'm just. I'm, I'm so glad around. that you get those blank stares though, because I get that so <laughs> like so frequently. I'm like, obviously, all this stuff like makes <laughs> sense to me, and it clicks. I'm like. Well, you know, like, I feed into it too, and I make it even more awkward. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and like I'm like, how do I not make this awkward? But it's like, like today's like crossfire. It's like one A, one B, two A, two B. It's called crossfire because they go across. You know, like I was showing them the arrows in crossfire, <laughs> but they're brand new, and it's like it's like sensory overload. And, yeah, especially yeah. when you start. Once you get past like three things, it's not even worth your breath. Get to it. When you get to that's it. exactly it yeah. too it's like don't, don't worry about it and they'll look yeah. at you like are you sure yeah just, Promise. Just chill. Promise. yeah, yeah. Promise. we'll get there if we get there um do you have like a favorite memory or something that really sticks out in your mind on the turf yeah probably the one one 
my peak score, which was 619 probably two years ago. Really? You know, under the old format. Yeah. I was, yeah. Do you that remember was what, a, kind of, what kind of circuit? Yeah, was it? it was probably a platonic. I mean, oh, okay. I do mm. halfway decent in, in the platonics. What I don't like about platonics is there's no warm-up. Like, swagging right away. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you're, it's the one day where I would say, like, maybe come in, run around a little bit, you know, but. Yeah, that was probably, you know, one of my highlights. And then, like I said, uh, the one time we had that inner, inner gym mm. competition there, and I, and I got paired with just yeah. three incredible athletes. Mm. It was so much fun. I, it just occurred to me. I've done various workouts for specific people, and particularly here in recent, you know, like the last year, just because it's the only location I'm at most frequently. You should send me your favorite tasks, and I'll put them in a workout, and I bet you I'll get you to peak again. <laughs> Well, maybe. I'll, okay. I'll try it, Mike. Well, there's no crawling tomorrow. Is there a jackalope, I thought? Tim actually came Tweaker. up with a, with a really good workout for me on the crawl for a cure because there was no way I could yeah. crawl for you know an oh. hour like that. Yeah. And he, he did really a great job. Time. I mean, I, I, I finished 61 tasks, I wow. think, which is, that's a lot for me. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I it think was, he did more than I did. It was, I was 59 you know, or something. You weren't 60, yeah. Yeah. I don't well, think we counted But you were crawling but. and I wasn't. So. Well, I skipped one, DK. <laughs> and that's, yeah. um, what, what, what were the tasks or like, like what was the flow? Uh, it was primarily, you know, I was on two feet for most mm -hmm. everything and mm -hmm. some body weight things. Uh, a lot of cardio mm -hmm. is, is really what mm -hmm. it was, uh, a yeah. ton of cardio, which I can do halfway decent. You know, yeah. My stamina is pretty good. I, again, I'm... I'm I'm always going through like media on my computer and stuff and trying to pull out things that I can use. I, I was just going through it like yesterday. I have pictures of you working out here, probably, it was probably 2014. I just remember like yeah. you yeah, doing well, Tyson's and stuff. Yeah, uh, I remember Kim, there was a, a girl in yeah. there taking pictures, sure. Wow. I, I, I just, that. I just remember. Yeah, because for, you know, I, I first started working out here and then mm -hmm. when you open, HT. Then I kind of went back and forth for a little bit, and then I just started going there all the time because it, it's mm -hmm. only a 35-minute drive to there instead of a 45-minute yeah. <laughs> drive down to here. Yeah. You know, so, so uh, cuts off a little time. In your in your words, explain to me what uh, like the swamp means. I like guess especially in the summer. The swamp is awesome. The swamp is awesome. I love it when it's hot do like you? that. It's not like Keith. Oh yeah, Keith. Yeah. I, I love having Keith come over. Yeah. You know. We, I thrive in that because I, I can. I feel like my body warms up in ten minutes instead of twenty <laughs> to twenty-five minutes, like it does, mm -hmm. like it did yeah. tonight when it's the igloo. But the swamp <laughs> means hot, sticky. The plate isn't moving good mm -hmm. on the turf, but it makes you tougher. You know, that's that. That was all. That's a, mm -hmm. that's our thing. You know, yeah, that's that's absolutely. how we get ready for turf wars. Swamp it's, monsters. Yeah, it's yeah. tough. Yeah, it's tough. Yep. You know, it just makes you better. You, you get through that work out there and you're you're dripping and but you feel so satisfied when you're done it's yeah. it's great I if, love it we've said this before I, like if people have never worked out at Harrison in the middle of the summer 100% humidity they don't <laughs> realize really what it's like yeah i mean t at least 20 degrees hotter than what it is in here and the plate doesn't move mm -hmm. it just doesn't move. we we love when we get Kind of some newbies in there, and they go, man, it's really hot in here. And yeah. we go, man, you haven't seen anything yet. Oh, or <laughs> wait, they wait come another from here. Month, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, you know, it's only May right now. Wait till it's June, July, and August. You know, I, I gotta say, I don't miss that. <laughs> like, I, I don't like working out. I like pretty, you know, controlled environment, consistent. Yeah, this um, is nice down here. I mean, I like I'm coming down right here. Now. It's not warm. It's um, cold. It's freezing. <laughs> You know, because it looks shorter, Mike. And I know it's not, but it, it just appears shorter. Well, yeah, you guys have a lot further <laughs> yeah, a lot after room, line four. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think about, like, rolling out the turf of all the locations and painting it Harrison and driving my truck inside, inside like, on the turf where I used to drive my truck in oh, yeah. on the turf. And, I think that's one of the nice things, too, about Cyphus is just the community. And, mm -hmm. you know, I... I've never been to Brownstown. I'd like to go there. But if I go there, I know 
I'm going to feel really welcome. I know Leah, I know Carlene, you know, they're just great ladies and good business people. They used to and, work out yeah, at, 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 at Harrison. Uh-huh. And, you know, I can go to, I, I have been um, to Shelby, you know, mm-hmm. and I know Jen and, and Jim, and, and again, you walk in there and you feel so welcome. And <clears throat> come down here, I know people, mm-hmm. uh, again, you know, it's just a great environment to, to work out in. And, and that sense of community, to me, is is the best thing about working out here yeah. the best you know, you've said great the same people. it's like birds of a feather you know yeah. like once like we're preaching to the choir right, <laughs> right yeah, yeah. I mean, that's so true and that's really kind of what i've i mean obviously trying to give you guys like a top-notch workout and yeah. a service but like the community aspect is really what pulls it all together yeah. and, um, you can go anywhere here and feel really good really good you know you're gonna you're gonna know people and that, that was one of the things, too, about coming here from the March Mayhem, seeing people I hadn't yeah. seen in a long time. Mm-hmm. It was just like a great, great gathering. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen Bill in a long time. I hadn't seen Michelle in a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, Keith was here. Yeah. Uh, uh, we got to do a, a Eric was here. wide get-together. You know, and then, mm-hmm. then I saw Leah and Carlene and some of the people from her place. And then mm-hmm. Jenny Baker was over here yeah. with the Mercurios. I mean, mm-hmm. it, was, it, was, it was I mean, great. it was a reunion for me. It was the first time I'd yeah. seen some of these people in a while, too. Um, just, just a good thing you've created. I appreciate that. It's it's fun, and uh, I'm excited to see you know what the next five, ten, twenty years yes. holds. You know, yeah, just so kind of see I. like hope I live that long. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna wrap that up. I really, Thank really you, appreciate Mike. it, Frank. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And um, you guys have been watching the Form First podcast, and we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>